Yeah, I'm so grateful, and I always love these nights when we have live preaching on all three of our campuses, and I don't have to worry about the video camera. So I love it. It's so freeing to feel that I feel unleashed tonight. So I'm so grateful for that. Well, this 10-week series, we, we hope and we pray that you will get everything out of it that God intends you. Commit to not missing a week. We have multiple services and multiple days, multiple locations. And so if you're not able to make it at maybe a five, five o'clock night, uh, come on Sunday. But we don't want you to miss one of the weeks of the next 10 weeks. We're going to be addressing fear and faith. We're going to be addressing lust and love. We're going to be, and you know who's going to get that topic, right? Lust and love. We're going to be talking about uh, greed and generosity, debt and freedom, anger and forgiveness, addiction and recovery. You name it, we're going to be talking about it because we want all followers of Jesus to live their lives unleashed. And as we talk about that, I can't, I can't help uh, explain, or I can't explain enough, I'm so excited about it. This is going to be one of the best series that I've been since we've been here, and I hope that you're involved and get involved. Um, as always, if you do not have a Bible, I want to encourage you to use the Bible located underneath the seat in front of you. Our main passage of scripture is going to be found at Matthew chapter 633 on page 965 and 1 Corinthians 1013 on page 1138. If you don't have a Bible that you can read and that you can understand easily, would you please take that Bible located underneath the seat in front of you home with you? We want you to read it. We want you to own it. Uh, we want you to apply it to your life. We really believe that if we read God's word and apply God's word, he will. Oh, you missed your cue. We really believe that if we read God's word and apply God's, God's word, he will change change our lives, right? We really believe that. So uh, I don't know about you, but I had a favorite class period when I was in elementary school. It began with an R and it wasn't arithmetic. Recess. I loved recess for 50 minutes. 120 kids were on the playground and we were running around and we were doing and playing whatever we wanted to play. Whether it was kickball, softball, the swings, the monkey bar, the jungle gym, tag, chase, hide and go seek. Whatever it was that we wanted to do, we did. And what I loved about that is there was a freedom that was there. When the teachers would line us up to go outside, we couldn't wait. They opened up that door and we ran unhindered to that playground. I loved recess because the teachers weren't out there telling me to quit tapping my pencil on the desk. They weren't telling me to quit bothering or pestering the person that was beside me. I had complete and total freedom within reason. I couldn't kill anybody, but within reason. And we could run and play and do what we wanted to do. We were free with no rules, just the open freedom of the playground for 50 minutes. So raise your hand if recess was one of your favorite periods in elementary or middle school. Okay, great. Now, do you remember what game it was that you played during recess? Was it, do you remember one of the favorite games that you had? And we're talking elementary and middle school, right? So some of us have to go back a little bit further. All right, on count of three, let's shout it out, okay? So one, two, three, what's your favorite game? One, two, three. Murder ball. They didn't let us play that in Tennessee, so... <laughs> Well, here's, do you remember that freedom that you felt? Do you remember that you were able to leave the classroom and able to leave that supervised uh, experience where your teachers are watching you and hit that threshold where you stepped onto the green and just ran and did basically what you wanted to do? It was playground rules from that point on. Do you remember that freedom? Do you remember that feeling that you had, that excitement that you had? Well, I want you to know something. God desires that we follow Jesus with that same freedom. 
that same sense of being unleashed, that same sense of freedom, God desires with the same excitement, with that same joy that we passionately pursue our freedom in Christ. You're free to run in the boundaries of God's grace, free to run in the boundaries of God's mercy, and free to run in the boundaries of God's word. Let me ask you, do you feel like you're ever being held back from experiencing all that God has planned for you to experience in your life? As a follower of Jesus, do you feel like you're missing something? If you do, these next 10 weeks are for you. We want you to experience a life unleashed and pursuing the freedom that God has for you. Now, I want to tell you a story about one of my recess days because I'm kind of setting up the next series. I'm setting up this 10 weeks. So I want to tell you a story about uh, when I was living my life unleashed as a third grader, okay? I was in third grade, and I was playing a version of Keep Away on the playground. Now, this version of Keep Away involved two teams— and you would, they would kick the ball off to one team. One team would kick the ball off to us. We would get the ball. And all we had to do was get into the end zone without being tackled or killed. So you could run with the ball as long as you wanted to. We would throw the ball off to uh, almost like rugby a little bit. Uh, except our name for this game was very politically incorrect. You did not want to be the person with the ball. Uh, people, if you had the ball, they were coming to kill you or smear you, in other words. So it was a very politically incorrect game. The option to not being tackled was to pass the ball off. And I was on a team at this particular game with a girl named Tammy Bills. Tammy was in sixth grade, and I was terrified of Tammy. Uh, her little brother had beaten me up in the bathroom. And so I remember walking out of the, the bathroom one night with a bloody nose and he was standing there smiling. I just remember, oh, I'm sad. But every time I saw Tammy, I remembered Ricky. So I was terrified of Tammy as well. The team kicked the ball off to us. It came to me. I was like the Steve Urkel of the class, right? I've got my glasses and I'm, oh, my lens is always popping out of my glasses. I scoop up the ball and I just start running like mad. Tammy gets behind me and she starts following after me and she starts screaming at me, back door, back door, back door. I had no idea what she was talking about. If you're Sports minded, you know that she meant throw it to her backwards, throw it to her. She's in the back door, throw it to her. I thought she was telling me to run to the back door of the school. <laughs> and so it's on the side where the end zone is. And so I'm running and I'm getting faster and I feel like the freedom, everybody is zeroing in on me. And as I think I'm about to make it to the end zone, these people are getting closer. Tammy reaches up, grabs the short hair on the back of my neck jerks me backward while I'm running in full stride. I fall down on the ground. I lose the ball. The other team picks up the ball and they take off going the other way. And Tammy is standing over me yelling, I told you back door. <laughs> I, okay. I was headed to the back door. Here's the deal. I was running unleashed. I was running in freedom. And I really thought I was going to make it until I was overtaken, jerked from behind, fall down on the ground and fumbled the ball. I think that many followers of Jesus, that feeling I felt laying there on the ground is the very same feeling they have when a behavior, when a temptation overtakes them and they give into some form of sinful attitude or sinful action. They were running that race with Jesus. They were following the Lord. They were running in freedom. And then their, their joy is knocked out from underneath them. And they feel like they're laying on the ground, confused, bewildered, not really knowing what happened. We want to help you as a follower of Jesus avoid that garbage. We want to help you live your life unleashed from the temptation to remain unchanged. See, because there is a big temptation to live our lives unchanged 
once we become a follower of Jesus. And as Pastor Chad shared his story, he was a follower of Jesus. He was living, and yet as a follower of Jesus, as a pastor of a church, he made some mistakes that he wished he could have taken back. That's all of us. And we want to help you live your life unleashed. So, regardless of what you've experienced, whether you feel like you've had your, your life knocked out from underneath you, whether it be through uh, past failures, through the sins of others, we want to help you pursue God's kingdom with passion, with enthusiasm, and uninhibited by past sorrows or past mistakes because we believe that all followers of Jesus want to live free. Matthew 6, Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. I believe that I have never met a follower of Jesus who did not want to pursue God and his kingdom. If, if they're a genuine follower of Christ, they want to put God's kingdom first. They have a want to deep within them. They have a desire deep within them to seek God's kingdom first, but often because they are living leashed and they're living chained to something else in their lives, they live devoted to their own personal kingdom instead of God's. Jesus talked about that earlier in Matthew 6, 24, when he said this, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. You take money and replace it with anything else. You cannot serve God and your family. You cannot serve God and your wife. You cannot serve God and your job. You cannot have two gods in your life. That's what Jesus is saying. There are followers of Jesus who want to follow God, but they don't. They try to follow God, but they can't. What holds them back? Better yet, the better question for me is, what holds me back? Do I follow God like I ought to follow God? See, I'm convinced that people do not live a life unleashed to follow God because they live leashed to their past. They live anchored and chained to something from their past. They allow temptations from their past to continue to resurface in their present. Is that you? As a follower of Jesus, are you living your life anchored to sin or are you living your life unleashed and free? So how do you seek God with all your heart if you constantly give in to temptation and go a different direction? So I want you to be encouraged today, all right? Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote this about temptation. He said, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Now this one verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it has a lot of hope and encouragement for followers of Jesus. After we have trusted Christ as our savior, after we have been born again, after we have received forgiveness for our sin, after we have confessed with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, after we have received Christ into our heart as our Savior, we begin to live for him. And a growing desire to please him grows within our heart and it burns within our heart and we begin to live for him. But man, oh man, do we ever wrestle with doing what is right. In order to live unleashed, we must first understand that all followers of Jesus experience temptation. All followers of Jesus experience temptation. As followers of Jesus, sometimes we tend to think, I think it's a Jesus. I'm wrestling with a cold. As followers of Jesus, I tend to think that all of us uh, maybe look at other people and just think that they have it all together. You might walk in and see people serving on the hospitality team and think, man, they've got it together. I wish I could serve like them. I wish I could love Jesus like them. I wish I could shine the light of Jesus like them. We look around at pastors or the worship team or, or we look around at deacons or we look around at our life group leaders or we look around at just the other people that are sitting on our row. 
and we see them week after week and we think they've got it all together. They don't wrestle with temptation like I do. They don't struggle with sin like I do. They've got it all together. Now, we acknowledge that all followers of Jesus experience temptation in our hearts, but there's, we also follow that up with something else. Maybe something subconscious says to us, but not like you. All followers, of, all followers of Jesus struggle with temptation, but not like you do. We look at others and think they read their Bible all the time. They have the perfect wife and the perfect family and the perfect home. And they drive the perfect car and their, their dog is perfect. He only barks at certain times. And we think something, as a follower of Jesus, something must be wrong with me. I must not be getting something. I must not be doing something right. And gosh, maybe I'm not even really saved. Maybe I'm not even really born again because we look at everybody else and think that they've got it all together. Well, guess what? According to 1 Corinthians 10, 13, temptation overtakes us all. Temptation overtakes us all. We all experience temptation and struggle against temptation. See, if we want to live unleashed, we must understand that we all experience temptation and we must also understand where those temptations come from. Now, according to the brother of Jesus, I desire the sins that prevent me from living unleashed. Now, earlier this point was up on the screen and our our tech people were saying, hey, you've got the wrong wording up there. That's not accurate. I'm like, no, it's accurate. I desire the sins that prevent me from living unleashed. Listen to what the brother of Jesus said in James chapter one, verse 13. He said, remember when you are being tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong. And he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. So I cannot lay the blame at anyone else's feet for the temptation that I experience in my life. Uh, Temptations don't, I I can't lay them at God's feet because they don't begin with him, right? Temptations uh, begin in us, in me and in you. We can't blame our spouse, even though we want to. We can't blame our children. We can't blame our boss. We can't blame our friend. Temptation that we experience in life begins with our desires. Those desires originate in me. Where do those desires come from? As we think about this philosophically, I want you to to think about it. The desires that you have for anything only come from your experience with that thing. For example, okay, raise your hand if you enjoy a nice chocolate something, chocolatey something. Okay, you know why you like chocolate? Because you've had it before. You know what it tastes like. It appeals to you. Your taste buds are like, Already watering. I said chocolate, you started drooling. (laughs) You enjoy that taste of chocolate. Therefore, in the future, you will desire that piece of chocolate again. If you've ever gone on a diet, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You don't start craving food until you stop, uh, until you tell yourself you're not going to eat it. Then your body's like, hey, I want this and I want that. You have that desire because you've experienced it before and guess what you liked it you like chocolate therefore you eat chocolate there are very few people who go to a spoiled carton of milk and say i like this it's good (laughs) right or they go and say i'm so tempted to drink that that bottle of milk that's curdled in my refrigerator you're not tempted to why because you've had it before and it tastes terrible It's awful, made you sick. And see, unfortunately for us, temptations come to us because we've experienced something sinful in our past that we liked. Therefore, those temptations come from our own desires and we all experience it. 
Knowing this helps us understand that I can create future freedom through present obedience. Say, so knowing where the desire comes from, knowing where that temptation comes from, that means that I can create future freedom, living unleashed through present obedience. The reason why we sin is because we like to sin. Now, we may hate it, right? We may feel bad. We may repent of it. Yet the reason why we do it is because for some moment, temporarily, there was something that we liked about it. And that's all we remember when we're being tempted. So the more we give into temptation today, the higher the likelihood we will give into temptation tomorrow. Why? Because it's our memories from our sin yesterday that stir your desire to experience sin today. And what we've got to learn to do as followers of Jesus is to limit our sinful experiences today, and it helps us limit our temptations tomorrow. Now, I'm not saying that we can eliminate temptation. I don't think that's a possibility. But I'm saying if, if we, we can limit it because they come from our desire, and our desire comes from the experience that we liked, so if we are able to somehow limit doing those things that we know is wrong or know are wrong, if we can limit those, then we maybe limit the potential for us to experience temptation in the future. Now, but we don't eliminate it, but we can maybe limit it. So the more we live in obedience today, the more we create future freedom. So here's, what, here's, here's how that looks in a practical way. Raise your hand if you're a parent of an 18-year-old and under in this room. Okay, parents, imagine that you had no internet filter on your internet and you had no passcode set up on your cable channel and that your children were just able to go to any website that they wanted to go to and they were able to watch any movie that they wanted to go to. Would that be a good thing? No, the reason why no is because we know what they see today impacts them tomorrow. And so if we're able to limit where they go today through our internet filters and through our passcodes on our televisions, then we're limiting maybe temptation from tomorrow. Uh, that's just called being wise, right? It's, it's living in wisdom. And that's what we want. If we're able to uh, prevent our child from being exposed to pornography, then we're able to help limit temptation for them in the future. It's that same concept that we apply to ourselves. Limiting sinful experiences today, walking in obedience today, sets us up for tomorrow to live unleashed and to live in freedom. So what do we do when temptation reaches out to us? What do we do when we're running along unleashed and we're following Jesus and temptation reaches out and grabs us by the short hair on our neck and pulls us down? What do we do? Well, first we have to remember because God is faithful, he will not allow the temptation in my life to be more than I can bear. That means I am able to live unleashed. I am able to run and live in the direction and the calling that God has for me, not because of anything on my part, but because God said temptation doesn't come from him, but he will not allow us to experience temptation more than we can bear. That means when you experience temptation in your life, God is saying you are strong enough to stand underneath the burden of that temptation. You can bear it. You can overcome it, but not on your own. Hebrews 2.18 uh, is an amazing verse to memorize. It says, for in that he himself has suffered being tempted, talking about Jesus. In that he himself has suffered being tempted and he is able to aid those who are being tempted. Why will we never experience temptation more than we can bear? Because Jesus bears our temptation for us if we allow him to. If we yield ourselves to God, 
if we submit to his control in our lives. Uh, the brother of Jesus said it very clearly, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. When temptations come your way, whether it be in the area of finance, whether it be in the area of anger and lust, whether it be in the area of honesty or generosity and greed, when temptation comes your way to not live as Jesus wants you to live, you are able as a follower of Jesus to stand your ground and live unleashed to your past sinful experiences because of Jesus, because of what he did for you, that he died to set you free. And you can live a free life, an unleashed life, an unhindered life through Christ because we have a promise from Scripture that he is able to aid every single one of us, regardless of the temptation that we face in our lives. That he is our mighty counselor, that he is our rock, and he is our source of strength and of hope, and he is the promise that we have in the future. He's our everything, and he will give you the strength to live your life unleashed. You are able to live victorious because of what Christ has done. Now, if you want to live your life unleashed, then you got to begin not just personally, but then you've also got to be, begin living that publicly, right? You, you need to be involved. If there are temptations for addiction or if there are temptations with anger or just societal issues that you struggle with, man, get involved with Celebrate Recovery. Every Monday night on our McCulloch campus, we have a group of people that gather for worship and sing and talk about the struggles and the temptations that they experience in life. Get involved with Celebrate Recovery. We have a place for you. And maybe if it's not just for you, you can be there to help other people. But get involved and get connected. We have divorce care classes uh, that you can read about. You can find them in our Connection Center. If you've been through a divorce, if you're feeling that hurt and that abandonment, uh, go to our Connect Center, our Connection Center, and get information about our divorce care that we have. We also offer marriage mentoring. If your marriage you just feel like is not all that God has for it, we have some incredible people that have stepped up and said, hey, I'm willing to be a marriage mentor. So, so they want to invest and they want to help and they want to encourage. So you can sign up for that online at calvarylhc.com. Go to our website, uh, go to our uh, ministries. I think it's under ministries and you'll go to our marriage ministry and, and enter your information to have a mentor assigned to you to meet with them on a weekly basis. Have another married couple talk with you and pray with you about all the decisions that you're facing in life. See, not only do we have the strength of Christ, but we also have one another. That's why the Apostle Paul writes and tells us to be devoted to one another in brotherly love. So we can be devoted to one another and we can encourage one another. And then we also have our incredible life groups that you have a place where you can join and be a part of something that is bigger than you, tapping into the body of Christ. And also with our FPU, tonight's our last night to sign up for Financial Peace University. Uh, man, sign up for it. Uh, get Purchase your book and get involved with a life group. They're going to be meeting here on Tuesday, night, uh, Tuesday nights at McCulloch and Thursday nights here. Uh, amazing. If you have children, we have child care on Thursday nights available here. We have something for you because we believe that you're wise and we believe that you want to follow God. We all want to follow God, but we're all willing to say we can't do it on our own. And we need the body of Christ to believe in one another, to encourage each other, uh, to pray for one another, to be honest with one another, and to build each other up. And that means we need you involved as well because you have some sharpening for me to give. And I'd love to hear it. And so you want to sharpen other people and let other people sharpen you. 
And I want to close with this. There's, there's also the great hope that we have because we know we've all given into temptation. You might have one of those things that they call the habitual sin where you're constantly struggling with a sin in your life. You're constantly struggling with something. You don't feel like you can live your life unleashed. I want you to cling to this promise. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Now, John doesn't say this might be an area that you keep struggling in, therefore you haven't really repented of it, therefore you're not really forgiven. He says he's faithful and he's just. He will forgive us of all our sins and wickedness. Jesus forgives. That's what the cross was all about. Forgiveness, reconciliation, restoration. And even though your sin may birth the desire to to sin even more in the future, God forgives you. And he invites you to come to him and receive his forgiveness. He invites you to talk to him as as an individual talking to a counselor and saying, Lord, I've sinned again. He invites you to experience his forgiveness and his cleansing power. Thank God for that new life that he promises us through Jesus. So as a follower of Christ, if there's a sin that you continue to wrestle with, keep going to Jesus. Don't let that sin prevent you from growing closer to Jesus. Just keep going to him and asking him forgiveness and grace. Keep reading your Bible and keep focused on him. But maybe you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior. Maybe you've never invited Christ to be the Lord of your life. Maybe you've never practiced that Romans 10, 9. If you, confess our, uh, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Maybe you've never received Jesus as your Savior. I want to invite you to come to our, our prayer team at the close of this service. Come down and talk with them. They would love for you to begin a relationship with God today and begin living an unleashed life free from the burdens of sin from this world. Let's go to the Lord together in prayer. Lord, we want to say thank you first and foremost for Jesus. Thank you for the cleansing that Jesus provides to us through the cross. Thank you that he has forgiven us. We've been reconciled, that we've been uh, made right with God. So, Lord, we're so grateful for that. And, Lord, thank you that you you promised us in Hebrews 2.18 that you are able to aid all of us who experience temptation. Thank you. Thank you that you just didn't save us and walk away, but thank you that you love us and you're going to stick with us for all eternity in this life and the next Thank you, Lord, that you demonstrate your love for us while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Lord, it's my prayer that you would work and continue to help us over the next 10 weeks to live our lives unleashed. If there are areas in our lives that we're struggling with, may we continue to come to yield to you and experience freedom, perhaps some freedom for the first time by surrendering their lives to Jesus. Lord, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.